The Web 3.0 space is booming with opportunity to build the next generation of blockchain-based applications. There's a huge financial upside to people who are early in this space building the right startups. And as a developer, you have a huge edge in doing this. And in this video, I want to talk about five multi-million dollar startup ideas for Web 3.0 developers maybe even billion dollar startup ideas that developers can build. So I'm gonna talk about all those in this video today, break them down and what you would need to do to pull this off, you know, as a blockchain developer myself. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna learn how to master blockchain step-by-step, -step, change your career, break into the web 3.0 space, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about five startup ideas that you could build as a Web 3.0 developer. And again, these are multi-million dollar startup ideas, maybe some of them even billion. And for that reason, I'm not saying it's just like easy, but that's the upside potential of some of these projects. So I want to talk about where I got inspiration from this video. A couple different places. One is this uh, post on Vitalik Buterin's website, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum, talking about hard problems in cryptocurrency to solve five years later. Uh, this is an older post that's gotten updated since then. And also this post from Chow Wang talking about Web 3.0 uh, and crypto startup ideas where he describes, you know, 100 plus uh, ideas. So I'm going to lift some of these ideas from these sources, but I've narrowed it down to a list of five different applications that I think are focused for developers. And I'll talk about the criteria for that. So number one is developers already understand the use case. Another thing is that, you know, these ideas are reasonable enough in scope where you could pull them off and build a proof of concept without having to take it to this massive application, although it could scale out to that. And it works with existing blockchain use cases right now. And I'll put a link to these resources down in the description below so you can browse the entire list and definitely see the, the, the resources that I use to help make this video for full credit. But let's go ahead and narrow it down to five that I think are good for developers. So the first one is to build Zapier for Web3. So what is that in case you're not familiar? So Zapier is a website that lets you build automations without having to code anything out, okay? So, you know, what, what does that mean? What's an example? So, you know, businesses use this type of thing all the time to automate routine tasks that they would normally do that, you know, before something like Zapier, you might have to have a developer to create it. So what would an example be? Let's say that, you know, somebody purchased a product on your website or well, maybe you want to add them to a spreadsheet or send them a follow-up email or if somebody submits a survey online, you want to capture that data and do something with it or even build simple social media you know, automations where if a certain event takes place and you can publish that on social media. So there's all kinds of things that you can do with Zapier. And the big value proposition is that you don't have to be a developer to do this. So, you know, you can see all the different uh, websites that are supported by this, things like, you know, Google Sheets, Gmail, you know, Twitter, Trello, Discord. The whole idea is that these are Web 2.0 companies that have uh, APIs where developers can make the applications talk to one another. And so Zapier basically takes all those APIs and lets you just plug and play to create your own automations without having to write any code. So what would a Web 3.0 version of this look like? Well, just like on Web 2.0, you have APIs that power these are the, the heart and soul of the Zapier functionality. And with Web 3.0, you know, the analogy here is that you have smart contracts that live on top of a blockchain, also the blockchain itself where you can see all this stuff and you have open access to it as a developer, of course, right? But the end user doesn't always have plug and play access to this. That's where the value proposition comes into play. So instead of, you know, uh, mashing up APIs as Zapier, you would be mashing up smart contracts and protocols on chain to create these types of automations, okay? So what would what could some, just some simple examples be? So literally just off the top of my head, I'm thinking like, you know, let's say uh, you have OpenSea where you're, you know, listing NFTs and buying them, okay? So let's say that someone purchased your NFT, you know, you could automatically, whenever you get those funds, you could swap it for a different cryptocurrency. Like let's say you didn't want to hold the cryptocurrency it was purchased with, you could instantly, uh, you know, swap the stable coin of your choice. That's a simple automation. Another one is let's say that you done some sort of routine schedule. You wanted to rebalance your portfolio inside your wallet to a certain percentage allocation. You can completely automate all that with an application like Uniswap, okay? So another example would be, uh, like just copy trading. So you could even subscribe to other users' wallets on chain and then do something anytime that person makes a transaction. Maybe it's swap the same token with a different amount or something. There's all kinds of ideas where you could just take on-chain activity and automate it to create some desired benefit where the person can get it without having to be a coder. But the big value proposition is letting the end user do whatever they want to. So you as the developer just create the way to interact with the applications and then you set these triggers like you would have in Zapier and then the follow-up actions with whatever protocol you want. All right, so the next idea 
idea is one that most developers are going to understand already if you've had any involvement in the Web 2.0 space, especially doing like DevOps or infrastructure. And that's basically a decentralized version of AWS Lambda. Okay, so what is that? So Lambda is basically an environment that lets you run code without thinking about servers or clusters. Okay, so you might have heard of AWS Lambda functions. So this is essentially where you can have code that runs in the cloud right, without having to spin up a web server that just gets run whenever specific actions occur. And so you can almost think about this as being a very similar thing to the last idea I talked about uh, with Zapier, but more at a developer level. Okay, so with Zapier, you're talking about uh, people who don't necessarily know how to code or just don't want to code and are you know having triggers and then doing some action based upon that trigger. This is a really similar type of thing uh, but, you know, a Lambda function essentially is where you can write custom code that goes into this slot and that code is going to get triggered uh, whenever the function occurs. So any of the examples I talked about in the last one, like automating, you know, NFT trade and swapping that to a different token or, you know, copy trading somebody that could definitely work in this paradigm, but you're making it more open for any developer to put any code they want to inside of this function. But thinking about this in a decentralized way would be like running code in response to events triggered from the front end or smart contracts. This can come from two different directions. And the big benefit here is this automatically manages the resources required to run that code. And it would actually facilitate reading and writing to a variety of different blockchains and storage protocols, maybe like IPFS, for example. So instead of interfacing with the suite of different AWS services like you know S3 or RDS, like for databases, You'd be plugging into different blockchain protocols, okay? We're talking like Ethereum, Avalanche, Solana, et cetera, et cetera. And also into decentralized file storage protocols like IPFS. And so that's what you need to do is hook into all these things, let developers write whatever arbitrary code they want to based on triggers and then actions. And they create an interface for developers to get into this and write whatever they want to. All right, so building off of, you know, the AWS idea as well in developer infrastructure, is idea number three, which basically would be to build like a web 3.0 version of like Firebase or some other tool that lets you create a web application really seamlessly, but in a web 3.0 paradigm, like Heroku is another example. So, you know, what would this look like? So essentially uh, creating the infrastructure where somebody can deploy an application to multiple different blockchains all in one go, basically having a suite for them to do that. And then also deploy their front ends uh, from the same location, okay, maybe hosting that front end on IPFS, and then seamlessly having, uh, you know, ENS uh, domain name or some other crypto domain name resolution to that URL. So essentially, what a developer can do is just create the application, put it out there in a matter of a few clicks, you're automating this entire process where they finish with a product where they can just hit, you know, a .eth link, and that instantly forwards the user to a fully decentralized application. Now, you know, a lot of developers can do this already, right, with the tools they have available to them, but there's multiple steps involved, and this automates the entire process where you can get it, you know, going quickly. And then you can also add additional benefits that they can get with this, like monitoring the application, like anytime there's some sort of error, like failed transaction that happens, they can get an alert about that. They can see a log of all their errors. Any type of performance optimizations that you could provide inside the application itself, you could offer that to them. If there's any type of other Web 2.0 resources that you might rely upon to make this happen, because you know at the end of the day, a lot of Web 3.0 applications are also hybrid applications that might rely upon those types of services. You could plug into that. And also the ability to like monitor application builds whenever they happen, whether they pass or fail, do automated testing before, you know, builds are actually ready to go live to production. All right, so idea number four is creating developer tools for smaller developer ecosystems that are outside of the Ethereum or EVM uh, ecosystem. So what do I mean by that? So you're talking about blockchains like Solana, okay, or even newer ones that are popping up that might even use like the Move programming language, for example, okay? So, you know, Ethereum is the largest developer community by a large stretch. And, you know, if you know Ethereum tooling and you can write smart contracts and Solidity, for example, you know, you can take those contracts and deploy them to multiple different blockchains, you know, EVM compatible chains. And, you know, because it's got such a rich developer ecosystem, we've had a long time for, you know, really good developer tools become mature, like, you know, Hardhat, for example, uh, and Truffle and everything we use like MetaMask, et cetera, et cetera. And some of the newer blockchain ecosystems have less mature developer tools or even just room for new developer tools to come onto the scene. When I first got in the space, you know, Truffle was the largest smart contract development framework. And, you know, we've seen stuff like Hardhat uh, really come to prominence over the years because it's done a really good job of implementing what developers want as well. Same thing with like Ethers.js versus Web3.js. There's lots of room to come in and create 
uh, new tools for smaller ecosystems like Solana. So what would you have to do to create this? Some of that might sound kind of hard, but really you're just talking about, you know, if you're talking about compiling smart contracts and writing tests, there's lots of tools to already do this type of thing that really what you have to do is just glue all these tools together to create a way for developers to do it inside of a framework on their computer and think about the current pain points that you might have with some of these tools to say, I don't really like how it does this. Let's kind of change the philosophy. And you might actually be able to come up with something that's better than existing alternatives. Or same type of thing, if you want to have uh, some sort of a library that talks to a specific blockchain because you don't like how one library works. You know, the underlying protocol for how you communicate with blockchains is going to be the same. You just have to write a wrapper around it that lets other developers use it in a library. And there may be even room to, you know, put this into a programming language that's not supported yet. Like, for example, let's say there's a really great JavaScript library for communicating with a specific blockchain, but there's not a really good one in Python, for example, and you're a Python developer, you could just take that and put a, you know, create a package that for new programming language, it makes that, you know, something new for, for developers. So idea number five is creating application specific layer two scaling solutions as a service. <laughs> That's a complete mouthful. So let me break down what that means. So what are layer twos? So uh, layer twos are essentially a scaling strategy for blockchains. So, you know, on Ethereum, for example, the long term uh, roadmap is essentially not try to scale the Ethereum base layer as much as relying upon the second layer called layer two, where you do most of the transactions. And then, you know, it's secured by the actual Ethereum network itself. Now, there's different types of layer two scaling solutions out there. There's general purpose layer two scaling solutions. I uh, like Optimism and Arbitrum, okay, where developers can write whatever application they want to and then put it out there, right? But there's also other layer two scaling solutions that are application specific that, you know, apps want to use it for, for one reason or the other. Things like DYDX, okay, it's got its own specific uh, application scaling solution, okay? You can see the different ones down here like Loop Ring, okay, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, lots of different apps are going to try this to create their own environment where they can do this. And there's opportunities for developers to essentially niche down and become experts in a really specific scaling technology where they can just offer this as a service for, you know, certain protocols that want to go this route. And so you might instantly object and say like, hey, why would I want to do that? Because, you know, their developers could just do it. But I'm telling you is if you can become an expert in that, actually a specialist in this type of thing, you can learn how that particular scaling solution works and then learn how to customize it exactly for how each application wants to do it. And if you've done it multiple times, you know, they're just going to get you to do it because you're the expert in it rather than having to get, you know, some other developer on their team to learn how to do it or worse yet, you know, hire another developer to just do it from scratch. Because trust me, there's such a massive talent shortage in this space. And if you can come in and satisfy that need, and even do it as a service where it's productized, kind of like I was talking about before, like any of these other you know, productized services. And that has a ton of upside potential as well. All right, so those are five different startup ideas that you can build as a blockchain developer and have a huge edge in uh, if you understand this technology. Now, like I was saying before, like none of these applications in of themselves are just going to be like dead simple to build. Okay, these are going to be challenging applications, not the type of thing you're just going to come out the gate as a rank beginner and create overnight. And these are real viable businesses and they'll take work beyond just coding to get them off the ground. But let's talk about, you know, mitigating the downside risk. There's tons of upside potential here, like I was saying before. Uh, but in the day, like if you were able to build one of these projects and you actually got it working, like a, let's say as a minimum viable product, there's lots of different ways that you could still profit from this, even if you don't turn it into a multi-million dollar opportunity for yourself. Okay, so one of them is just, you know, building it for learning. I mean, you're going to you're gonna overcome a massive hurdle anytime you try to figure this stuff out, which is ultimately going to be better for you as a developer in the long run. So another way is like, if you built this, you're going to have a portfolio piece that's like, like you're probably going to be able to get most jobs that you would want in the Web 3.0 space because it's going to demonstrate an insane understanding and initiative to actually create this, especially if other people can use it, okay? Um, and the other thing is like, there's lots of hackathons out there where you can win huge prize money. And these would be great hackathons ideas that you could easily win a ton of a ton of cash from a hackathon. And at the end of the day, like if you have an MVP like this and you ha it's got users in it, but you're not able to really take it to market, you don't necessarily have the skills or the time, the bandwidth, and you're just like not really jazzed about that. There's always the possibility to sell this MVP to somebody else who has the ability to do that. All right, so that's all I got for today. Hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast into the technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like you to me courses, but they're totally free. 
And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can show to master blockchain step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You know, to be an expert to get started today, I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.